Hello, and welcome to Using Matrices to Solve Systems of Equations. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. So let's start with a couple of definitions here. Uh, a linear equation in the n variables given by x1, x2, and so on, up to x sub n, uh, a linear equation with these variables has the form a sub 1, x sub 1, plus a2, x2, plus, and so on, um, all equals to b. Now the number ai, right, a1, a2, a3, a whatever, up to an, they're just numbers, they're just coefficients. We use the subscripts on x, you know, normally we use x and y, or maybe x, y, and z. The fourth letter of a mathematician's alphabet, it's x, y, z, and then w. But if we have a generic, like, I don't know how many variables, then we start using subscripts because we never know when the alphabet's going to run out. So in general, as n variables we have, it's just numbers in front of the variables equal to a constant, right? the constant term or the right-hand side of the equation. Now, all of these are, li these are linear, right? so there's no exponent on the uh, variables at all. And when we have linear equations, uh, we could form a matrix, and all a matrix is is a rectangular array of numbers. It has nothing to do with Keanu Reeves, has nothing to do with the red pill or the blue pill. It's just a rectangular array of numbers. An augmented matrix of a system of linear equations, and this is why it's important to us in finite math in this section, it's just the matrix whose rows are the coefficient rows of equations. So we're going to use a matrix to no longer have to write down the x, the y, the z, the w, all the different variables that we have. We'll keep them in organized uh, arrays of numbers, rectangular. Here we go. So if we look at a system x plus y equals 3 and x minus y equals 1, right? We have the bracket to say, hey, consider these two equations together. We have the two variables, x and y. We always set up our equations the same in a nice standard form. All the x's first, and then the y's, and then the equal sign, and then the constants. And if they're always in the same form, right? Adding more equations or more variables as needed, but always in the same order, always just looking identically the same in standard form, then we could write the matrix 1, 1, 3, the coefficient of x, the coefficient of y, and then 3. Uh, 1, negative 1, 1, the coefficient of x, the coefficient of y, and then 1. Frequently, we'll put a dashed line or a solid line here where the equal sign is, but you'll find that I don't do that all of the time. Um, it's just a way of, of showing that this is an augmented matrix. Everything on the left side of the line comes from the left side of the equations. Everything on the right side of the line comes from the right-hand side of our equations. And so writing a system in matrix form. Why would we ever want to do this? The reason for matrices is not really to solve uh, two equations and two variables. It's for bigger systems. But it's an organized system in which we no longer need to write the variable each time. If you have four or five equations with four or five respectively variables, this could get really, really uh, confusing if you're always writing the variables and writing the equations, and matrices just make that easier for us. We're always going to have our equations line up in standard form, so each column represents a specific variable. Uh, just as we use the elimination method for solving systems, we're going to have a method for solving matrices, and they use the same steps. So this is what we can do in solving matrices, solving, uh, reducing matrices. We can multiply or divide an entire row by any non-zero number. We can multiply a row by a non-zero number and add or subtract a multiple of another row. And we can switch the order of the rows. All right, huh? Don't worry, we'll get there. Now, there's this thing called Gauss-Jordan row reduction, and Gauss was a German mathematician. Uh, I want to say the 18th century. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, Jordan, I believe, was an English mathematician, but I have to look that up. He made an improvement on Gauss's method. Uh, Gauss-Jordan row reduction uses the three previous operations to arrive at a matrix in reduced row echelon form where we have ones on the diagonals, right, here's 
two different examples, and zeros elsewhere, so zeros below, zeros above, zeros below, zeros above. And constants, right, these are just numbers over here in the far right hand column. To make the ones, we're going to multiply or divide or switch rows. To make zeros, we're going to use the one, right, so that I need a one in this column in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to use this equation, this row, in order to make zeros below. Then when I make a one here, I'm going to use it to make a zero above. Similarly, I make a one here and then I use this first row to make zeros below. I make a one here and then I use the second row to make zeros above and below. I make a one here in the third row, third column, and I use this one to make zeros above. That's going to be our strategy or our, uh, our goal as we're solving these next couple of systems. So let's solve some using Gauss-Jordan row reduction. If I have the system x plus y equals 4 and x minus y equals 2, the first thing I'm going to do is I notice it's already in standard form, fantastic, I can write in matrix form. 1x, 1y, 4. I eliminate the x and y, that's really all I'm doing. I'm taking out the plus, I'm taking out the equals. Everything's assumed to be positive unless you put a negative sign. 1x minus 1y equals 2, so that's 1, negative 1, 2. Now I'm just looking at this system, and I want to work with this system using the three operations we have uh, on row operations. I have a 1 in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to use this row 1, and I'm going to eliminate this 1 and make it into a 0. How am I going to do that? I'm going to add row 1 to negative 1 times row 2. So when I add row 1, 1, 1, and 4, to negative 1 times row 2. Negative 1 times row 2 is a negative 1, positive 1, negative 2. I swear, that's a negative 2. All right, so all I did is I multiplied that row by negative 1, and when I add them, my answer goes in my new row 2. I kept row 1 exactly the same, 1, 1, 4. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 and 1 makes 2. 4 and negative 2 make 2. And I got my new row 2. Now that I have a 1 and a 0, my next goal is to make this a 1. If I want to make that a 1, the only way we make 1s is multiplying or dividing. I phrase it as multiply by a half. If you want to call it dividing by 2, either way we're leaving row 1 the same. My instructions say take half of row 2. Half of 0 is 0. Half of 2 is 1. Half of this 2 is also 1. So I made a 1, I used it to get a 0. I made a 1, now I'm going to use this to make a 0. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to take, oh, let's use blue here, negative 1 times row 2. So I'm going to multiply this by a negative 1. 1. So that's 0, negative 1, negative 1. And I'm going to add it to row 1. That's 1, 1, 4. 1, 0, 3 becomes my new row 1. Always keeping in mind where I want to go, how I'm going to get there. So, using row 2, the 1 in row 2, column 2, to make a 0 above it, these are the instructions I used, I end up with 1, 0, 3. Now our solution says 1x plus 0y's equals 3. x equals 3. 0x's, 1y equals 1. So y equals 1, and we have our solution, 3 comma 1. Let's take a look at another example. This one's a little bit bigger, same idea. All right, so now we have three equations and three variables. Negative x plus 2y minus z equals 0 becomes negative 1, 2, negative 1, 0. Second equation, negative x minus y plus 2z equals 0 becomes row 2, negative 1, negative 1, 2, 0. And equation 3, 2x minus z equals 4 becomes 2x's, 0y's, but don't forget that negative that goes with the z, negative 1, and 4. After we have it written in matrix form, 
Now we want to get a one in the upper left hand corner, not a negative one, we're positive people here. We want to make that a positive one. So I'm going to multiply row one by a negative one. It changes the sign of everything in row one. Nothing else changed. I didn't mess with row two or row three at all. So one, negative two, one, zero. Fantastic. First goal, done. Now I want to use the one in the upper left hand column to make zeros down below it. Now I'm going to do this in two stages. So let's, uh, let's get some blue going on here. Row one, one, negative two, one, zero is being added to row two. Here's my instructions. Added to row two. And this will be my new row two. I have zero, negative three, positive three, and those were both zeros. And you can see that placed in my new row two here. At the same time, right, I used a one here to make that into a zero. One and negative one, they were ready to go. Now, what do I have to add to two to make it a zero? I add negative two to two in order to make it a zero. So I'm going to multiply negative two times row one, add it to row three. So I'm going to do negative two times row one, add it to row three. My numbers are really not coming out. There we go. When I add straight down, I get zero, four, negative three, and four. And we can see that here in row three, our new row three. Notice after I get the one in the upper left hand column, I leave this row alone, but I use it to manipulate row two and row three. Fantastic. We got a one in the upper left hand column. We got zeros below it. Now I need to turn this negative three into a one. Row two, column two, I need that to be a one. What can I multiply or divide negative three by in order to make it a one? I choose to call it multiplying by a negative one third. You could choose to divide by th negative three instead. The only thing I'm changing is row two. Zero times a negative one third is zero. Negative three times a negative one third is one. Three times a negative one third is negative one and zero times a negative one third is zero. So this is where we are so far. We still have some work to do. We got a one, zero, zero, we got a one. On the next slide, we're gonna make zeros above and below using the one in row two, column two. All right, so we have our previous, previous matrix from the last, last step on the last slide. If I want to, Add something to negative two in order to make it zero. It's gonna be a positive two. That tells us exactly what to multiply. That's why we have a one here. One times two will make two. Two plus negative two will make a zero. That's exactly what we want. So that's what I do. I multiply two times row two. Add it to row one. And this becomes my new row one, one, zero, negative one, zero, as you see right here. Similarly, if I want to eliminate the four that's in row three, column two, uh, I should do this correctly. This should be a negative four times row two added to row three. Let's see if I did that work correctly. I'm going to do negative four multiplied by row two, so that's zero, negative four, four, and zero, added to row three, zero, four, negative three, and four. The good news is my math's on point, it's just my typing that's not accurate, because I did do the operation when I typed it with the negative, uh, I just didn't type it correctly, that's a bummer. That's all right, all right, mistakes happen. I don't do that on purpose. Fantastic. So we got a one in the upper left-hand corner and zeros below it. We made a one on the last slide. Now we made a zero above and below. We already have a one here in row three, column three. Now I'm gonna use this one to make zeros above it. Look at that, it's a one and I just need to add. Uh, 
not necessarily blue. Let's use this one in blue. Row 3, 0, 0, 1, and 4. Added to row 1, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. Gives us 1, 0, 0, 4. That's a 0, you can't tell. Row 1. And row 3 plus row 2 to give me a new row 2. There's 0, 0, 1, 4. I'm going to add that to row 2, 0, 1. Negative 1, 0. And that gives me 0, 1, 0, 4 in my whoop, row 2. Yeah, they're not straight lines. That's all right. Straight's overrated. 0, 1, 0, 4. And, of course, my third row, 0, 0, 1, 4. Our solution, then, is x equals 4, y equals 4, and z equals 4. A step at a time. Know where you're going. Know the steps on how to get there. It's never more challenging than multiply and add. Just make sure you put it in the right spot each time. That's it for using matrices to solve systems of equations. I know that's only two examples. Uh, but if you'd like, you can go to my website. Check out Math 1508. Chapter 8, I believe, has systems of equations using matrices as well if you need extra resources. Thanks for listening.